Hi, it's Mickey Dolenz here. You're listening to Inspirado Projecto. Hey, bro. Do you remember a 1973 science fiction film called Westworld? It was about a, a vacation resort area run by robots and people indulge their fantasies. They won't go to Westworld. There's a Western town. There's a medieval. There's an ancient Roman town. Do you remember this film? What do you think about it? Thank you very much, Mickey Dolenz, for introducing Inspirato Projecto and uh, Man Behind the Machine. I, yes, I have seen the old West World. And in fact, I was talking with my buddy John Garside about, um, oh gosh, there's a character, there's a character that's in Fallout who's named Nick Valentine, I believe. And uh, he's like this android. I think he's an android, I don't know, cowboy, android cowboy. So the picture I saw of him, I I said, wow, this reminds me of Yul Brenner in Westworld. And sure enough, it looked just like him. So I was wondering, I I wonder if they've, if they based this off of him, which by the way, are you excited about the, um, aren't they making a Fallout TV show? Gosh, there's so many, so many stories that could unfold from a TV show like that. So much potential. Uh, Westworld, I thought it was great because, um, what the heck, what? There was something, oh gosh, I was talking with someone about Westworld. Um, one of my friends made this analogy that Westworld is the same movie as like two or three of these other movies. I forgot what they were, but he's like, yeah, think about it. It's this, but it's it's this premise instead of that premise, but it's still the same kind of thing. Uh, but I, I always love that idea of the, those movies where the, um, where the characters wake up to what they are or what they're within. Um, you know, some kind of social construct or something. It's like the, um, well, it's like the Matrix of sorts, huh? But yeah, Westworld, great, great old movie. I loved the first and second season of the TV show. Oh, wow. I, wow. Just, just that, the splendor, right? The splendor. So I'm excited about this episode. We have a surprise, surprise, fun fact by Henry D. Horse. You never know when that's going to show up. You never know. In any episode, he may just, like the Kool-Aid man, just, oh yeah, just crash it through the wall. Uh, So stay tuned for a fun fact by Henry D. Horse. Also, um, thank you to Blythe Baines ahead of time, singer-songwriter Blythe Baines, for... um, for also stopping by to say hi. She will be on here at some point. You'll be able to hear my song, Face Palm Theme Song. Uh, now, the meat of this episode features fearlessly phoenixing. This young lady and uh, old spirit. She's one of these people that I just feel like I've, I've, I've known in the past many past lives, just like Lisa Bowman. Some of these folks, Rob Fronebarger, some of these folks that I've been bringing on from TikTok, Fearlessly Phoenixing is from TikTok. And um, she would always just give these wonderful positive messages all the time. And then she started getting into synchronicities. And I thought, ooh, now what's going on here? Um, So here we go. Thanks for listening to Inspirato Projecto. Get ready. Get ready. You may you may find yourself uh, finding a, maybe a lot of what she's saying very familiar to you, uh, reflecting your own sentiments, your own ideas. So that's part of the fun of this this podcast is that you never know what's going to resonate with you in what way. Anyway, thanks for listening. Take care.
Sounds like a good song. Just another Wednesday for me. <laughs> exactly, right? Like, oh my goodness. Legit, I've had this problem my whole life. Growing up, I remember my mom, she had the uh, communications company come out, like the telephone service company come out and try and figure out what was wrong with our phones, like our home phones, because they were staticky as all bad. And they would cut out and they were just, they were brutal. My mom had a huge Rubbermaid filled with cordless phones and everything, right? And so the guy from the communications company came out and he tested the lines outside of the house, everything like that. And he's like, lady, I don't know why. <laughs> There's no reason why your house is so messed up, but it is. But yeah. Whoa. And then so my, my mom tested all the phones. Like, so later now in my 20s, right, is my mom tested all the phones. And she's like, hey, I found all these phones. And guess what? They all work. And then she's like, do you want them? And I'm like, sure, I can try some of them. We'll see. And <laughs> each one of them broke. <laughs> Whoa. Have you ever <laughs> experienced like poltergeists or anything like that growing up? Any sort of like uh, electronic voice? What do they call that? EVP or anything? Honestly, I have been like, I kid you not when I tell you that like my life has been navigated to avoid the horrors of whatever the hell was happening in my brain that like 14 years old I kid you not okay here I am in the shower I've already been dealing with like this god awful feeling like something's always watching me and I always felt like something was gonna take me okay and I remember um because we didn't move from Vancouver Island until I, I did grade six in Alberta so in around like right before grade six kind of thing is um, we were living in Comox, Vancouver Island. And like, I was terrified there. Like I remember running to the basement to go grab a can of frozen juice out of the basement freezer, which like it was the Comox box. So it didn't actually have like a basement. It's just the way that the basement is like a basement is normally designed was the main floor and then the top floor was like your entire living and like kitchen and everything like that so I remember running so fast because I was so terrified of something being there I always had this horrific fear of something being there I ran so fast I wiped out in between the doorway of the back room and the entryway and I smacked my head on the cement <sighs> And I remember just crying and laying there flat out on the ground in the doorway, like, holy crow. And so I, when I was older, I remember like always asking my mom to be like at the door because like I was terrified. Like I would run the garbage out no matter like what, right? I was terrified. I remember being terrified of this feeling of something sitting on my chest watching me. And it's funny, one of those synchronicities actually was like the hooded figure that you described because I remember watching, because everybody always used to say, like, don't watch scary movies. And I'm like, dang, you know what? Snow White is too, like, I honestly didn't watch Snow White until I had my daughter because it was too dang scary when I was, like, growing up and everything. So, because my brain was way more scarier, like, way scarier. I could not even fathom adding anything in that could happen, like, within the physical touch world, Right. So, um, yeah, I was terrified of this feeling. And so I'm 14 years old now and I'm in the shower and I feel like something's watching me on the other side and it's short. I said, I always that it was about like three, four feet tall kind of thing. And it felt like it had yellow eyes and I would just sit and watch and watch. And I remember being in the shower and I pulled the curtain back a little bit and the things there that I can tangibly see. So I put the curtain back, step back into the water. No, 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 I gotta look again. Now I'm gonna keep that little portion open. And I do this three more times until it's like the curtain is only a quarter way closed. And now I have it all the way open and I'm still feeling this horrible feeling. This thing is just watching me. 
I freak out to the point where now I am screaming and crying. And you got to think, 14 years old, especially as a girl, you're all like, no, I don't want my parents seeing me. I didn't care. I was 14 years old, bawling and screaming my eyes out, rocking back and forth, butt naked, because I was terrified. Because even when the curtain was open, I could feel it there. And so, like, there was these fears that dictated my life. Like, oh, they were horrible. Were and those so, some of the earliest? What, what were some of the earliest times where you felt that kind of, you know, where maybe it correlated with something that was going on or whether it was a, a scary movie that you had seen or whether it was just something that just popped out of your brain while you were, you know, walking along? What What's like one of your earliest memories? Um... One of my, like, most earliest memories, see, it's funny, I don't really have, like, that, like, go-to day-to-day recollection of my, like, upbringing or even, like, the last year of my life or anything like that, Um, but something that always... It'd be interesting to see if there's some kind of tie, some kind of, you know, a common frequency or something that ties together what you felt there you know, in the shower and maybe it links up to other times in your life where you're just like, Oh, I recognize that vibe. There's that vibe again. So like when I was, okay. So this was like a daily occurrence at the time. Like this was any time I had to go downstairs, go into the dark, go outside at night. Like my whole life I was petrified of windows at night and there was no way I was ever opening up a curtain because I was always terrified that something was going to be on the other side. And I always had this horrific pit feeling that I was going to be taken. And I remember my aunt, cause she's the one who like raised me in this world of knowing, um, yeah, knowing like my aunt was, she was treated improperly and she was hurt like emotionally, mentally, and things like that for being unique because she she knew far more, far more than what I had ever seen anyone. It's only been, honestly, the last couple of years where, like, this kind of thing has, like, the way she lived her life is now a fad. And yet, at that time, she was ridiculed, mocked, and destroyed called a space cadet and everything else like that that like I remember her telling me about the giants and I remember thinking like giants what are you talking about like what but I'm very thankful that my brain has this recollection like cataloging thing where it holds on to absolutely everything And that when it's needed for recall, it can come in at, like, great detail. Like, I have photographic memory as well. But when it comes to, like, my childhood, um, this was just, like, an impending feeling. But I don't remember what life was like before we had moved to Comox, Vancouver Island. And that's where, like, this past two years has been gotten like really crazy interesting and it's funny one day my friend um cat she's the one who like introduced me to aliens because prior to that like i was so terrified my whole life that i would never allow the acknowledgement of anything you know like i i I could not allow the concept of aliens, monsters, anything, ghosts, even though myself, I knew that like I was able to contact and like download almost like a, uh, you know, like when you download the schematics of something or if somebody puts in all the numbers into like a bookkeeping program and they download the, the, the summarized file, which is everything that has been accumulated, correlated, and like now laid out. It was like, Mm -hmm. I was always given that. And yet, like, 
the actual like fathom that these things could come into play in my tangible life was just it was too terrifying because if that became tangible then that meant the other things that I was terrified could become tangible and that was just not a that was not a risk I was willing to take and now I've come to an agreement where it's like a, I know that you guys respect that I can't I can't handle that and then I'm not okay there and so like one night the Pleiades um, constellation was like vibrating. It was like blinking at me, which how I came to knowing of the aliens was this video I took. And I was like, what the heck is the sky doing? Like these, these stars, they're moving and they're blinking and they're moving and blinking. Like, this is something I've never seen. And so I sent it to my mother-in-law because she's always out in the woods and things like that. And uh, her boyfriend's really knowledgeable and things like that. So I'm like, you know what? She She's going to know. She's going to tell me why this is. She's like, so interesting. I've never seen that before. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So then I send it to Kat and like I get this message back and she's like, wow. And then another message back is like, oh, the aliens it's aliens and it was funny because she had given up like she had been someone who had been really interested in aliens and everything but she'd been going to nursing school at the time and she's she had just like kind of been giving up that aspect mm. because it was almost like a fantasy idea at the time and this was like a holy crow like her she she intuitively answered and then her like present self caught up afterwards and was like oh my god holy shit that is <gasps> and then we had like this insane amount of pictures that like i have literally a catalog of incredible photos that she had been taking of their presence wow god yeah like you have no idea the amount of photography that like Sure, if you're someone who's like super skeptic and it's like, oh no, that's this. But if you're not and you go in and you look up like other confirmed things and other things like that, you can see clear as day that like whatever you instinctually felt within that image is exactly what you feel in it. Like, I mean, I remember seeing these like really weird, I don't know, um, lights in the sky this past fall and my daughter tells me that it's an astronaut and she starts waving she's like hi and I'm like that can't be an astronaut she's like well then it's the aliens it's it's, it's the <laughs> aliens. And I was like oh okay cool like this is the same kid who told me one day all about the vortex and how on the other side of the vortex she could be my mom and I could be her sister and in another vortex I could be this and like a kid you know and she was going through some like like because her dad's army so he's gone a lot and she is a highly sensitive kid and she is very um in tuned as well and so like when it came down to her dealing with some emotional stuff is that she was she would cry and say that she doesn't want us to die because she like she doesn't want any of us to die because she doesn't want to be born to other parents wow right like the fact that not... she has those concepts and is aware of those things and it, does this sound like this correlated around the time you're saying the past two years <laughs> it seems that more and more of these kinds of uh, awakenings, I guess, have been coming to you. Um, yeah, because like I can honestly say that uh, leading up to meeting Kat, um, so all in all, like I had always had this like it was always my like it was my drunken party trick that I could tell you all about you, and if you were like super lippy with me, I would tell you all about you no qualms 
lay it all out there and I would like point out everything and probably stuff that you did not want to hash up. That was my like, um, don't be mean to me. This is my, this is my party trick kind of thing, (laughs) (laughs) you know? And then I was a massage therapist. And I remember after I had finished massage therapy school, I had taken a hot stone class by the same person who had taught me uh, massage therapy. And I remember my first ever one that I had been doing this uh, hot stone therapy, my partner at the time um, had an emotional release. And I was like, whoa, dang, what am I like? And because this girl was like, she wasn't a huge fan of the, like people, more people like me now than they ever did in my entire life. I was that kid that was always alone, grew up alone, stayed alone, was always by themselves. And no matter how pe- how mean people were, still, like, showed up and would, like, be there and, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, like, um, it it's just, that was, that was my defense, I guess, was to be like, well, I, I can, I can discover your truth in, like, 60 seconds kind of thing. And so, like, with that being said is that, like, I always thought people were just being nice, especially like if I had had interactions with um, people's passed on loved ones and things like that, where I could describe a specific scenario. I figured everything was just like, you know, the like hypnosis that happens at like an entertainment center kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That is not the same like that. Like anybody who's ever had hypnosis knows that they don't a completely lose consciousness. B is that they there's no like you're not going to act like a fool up on stage you know like that is that is someone agreeing to be a part of this playfulness right Mm -hmm. and so that's where like i just thought everybody was being nice but then i had this friend that i had met on this app called live me um it was my first experience really of like the same nature as what tiktok has and things like that but um he had sent me a picture of this girl and then asked me what i felt off of this photo and so i said it and then he sent me pictures in return of a group chat and a chat between him and this girl and it mirrored everything that i said whoa and i was like oh my god People aren't just being nice. Oh my God. Like this is actually like, like I just really believe that I, I always made everything up, you know? Wow. Wow. So up until that point, you're just like, Oh, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm just talking off the top of my head and not realizing that maybe you were channeling things, you know, that you were actually stepping outside of yourself and allowing this force to kind of speak through you. Huh? And see, and it was funny because as a massage therapist, I remember do like I always prided myself on the fact that I may not be able to tell you what muscles go where and what does what, but that when I would do the massage on the person, is I could intuitively find exactly what that specific person's need and muscle and what technique it was. And it was almost like I was doing this like um like interhand work where like almost like you were able to physically like grab the actual inside belly of the muscle and like elongate it and relax it you know and and it's funny because like uh that that I don't know if you actually got to hear that part prior because it cut out but I had been mentioning about how when I would do um any type of like there I had been doing a video and I could see that a channel came across. And so when I looked back at it, um, I was reviewing to see if there was a point where I could see where this channeling came across because I felt this sensation of being suspended in behind where I was able to like look up and acknowledge that the TV was there and that acknowledge that the time was there and that the video was recording, but like where things were still moving and to look back at the video, I didn't blink the entire time that that channeling was coming through. Wow. 
And I was like, whoa. That's incredible. So, okay, so so once you realized that your intuitions were, in fact, you know, uh, guiding you, you know, guiding you along, once you started kind of realizing that, did you start finding yourself intentionally, you know, manifesting things at that point? Um, manifestation has always been an elusive thing for me for the fact that like the biggest thing with manifestation is the belief, right? And so with my own, um, like storyline and what I like for me, I call it, um, debts and investments. Because, like, when we have negative experiences or positive experiences is just, like, a investment that, like, we get that positive investment or we have a negative investment. Either one is that, like, if you owe 20 bucks on your credit card and that compounded interest goes on to that, you're going to now owe that plus that, right? Right. And so when you have that negative in experience in your life is that the um stenographer just like in a court right like everything gets recorded doesn't matter what anyone says during it it doesn't matter whether it's important or it's not important the stenographer writes absolutely everything down and so just like that our subconscious keeps track of absolutely everything and so when there's that negative experience that we have and it's not dealt with, whether that be because survival is key at this current time. And that can be survival in the sense of that emotionally, we are not, we are not in a capable capacity to be able to handle that. Or whether it be an actual physical need of survival, is that even if that is the case for which why we couldn't address that negative impact why we couldn't pay that debt off is that it accumulates interest and now our next judgment that is a almost like a one of those like you know the map the mind maps where it has a center part and then all the little bubbles around it well it's like when that negative experience is triggered by another another like, so now you go into a new situation and it recognizes one of those bubbles. It all of a sudden makes that as a center bubble. And when it has that crossover and it's like, oh my gosh, that matches six out of eight bubbles that have been through this before. Oh no, we had this compounded interest. And so now we are going to judge it with the same as what we had instead of judging it from zero we're judging it from this negative compounded interest on our negative experience so we it's like a, almost like a tree branch right mm-hmm. so like but it's growing in this negative facet if we're not like able to address it you know and that's because our subconscious is always taking it in unfortunately though we live in a world uh, unfortunately but fortunately is we live in a world where we are no longer in a state like for a species of itself. We are actually no longer in a survival state because like no matter the the current political issues and everything like that is like for the we have houses on in more places than we don't. You know, we have protection, we have food and whether that's for everybody or not at this current time is beyond um, the concept of this right now. But as a species, we are, we are into thriving zone, but when our mental uh, state is still triggered in the same way that our, like, cause it still elicits the same chemical hormonal effect of survival and so forth. Um, even if it doesn't have the physical threat of it, you are going to get the physical endurance and the physical like push that you need to survive that scary thing like the lion and the zebra. You're like, oh God, I gotta run, 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 run. 
But because we're not actually being threatened, that shows up as anxiety. Heart palpitations, overthinking. Yeah, it's often been said that anxiety is just the opposite of excitement. It's the same thing. It's just depending on, you know, what side of the coin that you want to kind of look at it. And it's interesting that, um, you know, like you're saying, that fight or flight mode, when when people are in that fight or flight mode, there, there's very little room in their brains for dreaming of what their preferable reality is, I suppose, if they're busy, like, you know, constantly trying to feel like they're surviving or something's coming to get them or um, the unknown is terrible and it's this big, scary thing that's coming to get them. And I suppose that's what's part of the, the fun thing of realizing that we get a chance to define things how how we want to and change that definition and put the brakes on that momentum and go, okay, put the brakes on that, but let's, let's, let's move the train over in this direction now. And so like knowing what, you know, concerning how momentum moves along and like you talk about with the tree branches and everything, knowing that that works in the, in the favor of a preferable sort of like, you know, I want to go in this direction. I do want to go in this direction type of mindset, knowing that, have, how have you been noticing yourself applying that and how it's been, you know, sort of blooming into your reality? So that is something that I recently actually had been focused on was um, like a really accept the download, upload, epiphany, whatever you want to call them as they come. Mm-hmm. And so one day I was just like, because a friend of mine, their username has 369 in it and how, you know, Nicholas Te- Nikola Tesla's quote. Yes. On like, yeah, exactly. So Yes. They're living numbers, right? They're alive. They Right. So I'm like, I've been like kind of going back to these numbers like consistently over the past while. I'm like, are they degrees? Are they this? Are they that? And somehow while I was like observing this and I had it written down, I was like, well, what if? Like everybody always says, careful what you wish for, Mm -hmm. right? And we have to think about like all those like fables and things like that where people get exactly what they wish for, but it's never what they want, Mm -hmm. right? And that everything has its price and i was like huh what if the trick is is because it's true everything does have its price if you want something that is highly successful and it's like extremely sought off of, that means that you aren't going to have the same kind of time for maybe your other dream was having every weekend with your family at a cottage in blah 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 Well, which one do you want more? Because one of those is going to have to be given in a bit because that's everything in life is balance, right? Like I think of that as almost like a flow chart and that kind of like in a video game where you have so many skill points and so you can fill out them, but no matter which way you fill them out, you're still only going to have that same base amount. And so everything is going to have to be adjusted to try and fit whatever it is within to that category. So I was like, okay, so what if like you came up with like, what if it was about having a end goal of what you perceive as perfection? And then what are like six things that you really want? And three things that you are willing as a compromise. So maybe for that person who really wants that exceptionally um, like sought after business, blah, blah, blah. They they compromise the fact that maybe that means that they're not going to be doing their painting class every Saturday. And that when they do find their most favorite home, they're going to have to actually pay someone to do the renovations and they're not going to get to do that because that's the thing is you can't have it all like when you when there's that whole have your cake and eat it too you can't have the cake without either buying it or making it doesn't just magically appear (laughs) so how you uh, how you access like how you accumulate that cake Yeah, you can eat it all you want, but what did you have to spend to get you there? Because that's that part that you have to give up. 
for whatever it is that you want. And that's where I realized 369 in my brain at that download point was that like, maybe it's about understanding that there is no such thing thing and everybody knows there's no such thing as perfection but we always tell everybody just focus on the positive focus on the positive 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 it's like okay but that's setting people up for failure because nothing can be 100 percent at the same time as everything else being 100 percent. you literally cannot blink at the same time like n- your body physically cannot send two signals at the identical time so that's why like your eyes when you blink there's still like a fraction of a millisecond off between your two eyes is because you physically can't because they can't and so like that's where it's like this acceptance that like you have to give a little to get a little and it's not about compromising in the way of compromising but it's a about realizing that you're human you only have so much time in a day but if you want to feel your heart's reward you have to understand that making certain things as the priority and recognizing what the parameters of what's that's worth is like setting that like this is how much debt I'm willing to sacrifice. You know, like when you when you start your own business and you put up this like, okay, I'm going to, I put all my savings into this or I got the funding by these people is like, I have got to prove this, right? But it's that like, it's, it's about what are you willing to accept in order for what you want? You know, it's how, like, people say, like, that some people are willing to, like, step on anybody to get to where they want. Well, that's what they're willing. And, and the reason why that works is because they're acknowledging what they're willing to give to get what they want. It doesn't have to be viewed as negative. Just like diet, the word itself actually just means what your nutritional intake is. It has nothing to do with losing weight, being skinny, being fat, being anything upside down or inside out. It's interesting that you're talking about the idea of setting oneself up for failure. Because I was, I was thinking about that, how, you know, sometimes when, when folks are like, okay, if this, if this is not pulled off exactly this way and this exactly this time and this most perfect thing, then I'm either going to be angry. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to feel uh, like I failed. You know, it's like, it's like they're, <laughs> I think that's where people set themselves up for failure by allowing for those sad, I'll call them anchors. Um, they're already preparing. They're like, okay, I'm going to go off into the gallows if I don't, if this thing doesn't hit the mark, you know, it's like, wait, hold on. No one is instructing you to go hang yourself, sir or madam. Like you're not, you're not required to feel like devastated or sad, or, you know, if, if this thing is not exactly set up to this specific thing, I think what happens is if people allow for the universe, let's say this, you know, this is of course talking from the 5D perspective. I think if people allow for the universe to work through them and for them to get out of their way and allow for that ego to get out of the way and go, let's collaborate together. And you go, okay, universe, I'm going to let you have your say in how you are going to help, uh, how you're going to um, aid me and collaborate with me in creating this thing, um, you know, having it all come together, having all those little pieces, all those little pieces come together just the way that they do. However, I'm going to leave it up to you, universe, because I realize that what I'm thinking of right now is just merely a blueprint. I'm going to allow you, universe, to kind of go whoop and fill in those blanks. And I think what happens in that situation is when it does happen, and even even if it doesn't match up exactly, you know, exactly, um, we can actually go, wow, this is, in what ways is this so much more than I ever originally dreamed? You know, in what what great ways has the universe filled in the blanks and um, um, made this thing come true? And then on top of that, I think what's so important is when that does happen, it's to celebrate, to celebrate the fact that that thing actually is right there happening in front of you. Because really, what was the point of dreaming up that great thing in the first place if you're not going to celebrate it and go wow it's truly truly happening you know then that excites you the next time you want to dream up something really um 
unexpected or exciting. I know with with your epiphanies and, and synchronicities you've been putting on TikTok, which, by the way, I'm so grateful for because I love I love seeing people's um, synchronicities. I love how excited they are when they're sharing those synchronicities. And of course, in most cases, they match up with my own synchronicities. Um, when you see those synchronicities, are those signs to you? Because I feel that they're always signs to me that the my manifestation is, you know, it's 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 happening. It's kind of like a guidepost. How do you view synchronicities when they're when they're popping up in your in your reality experience? So um, for myself is that like I definitely take um, everything in like I like to describe it as having like a filter. So whatever my brain has made. So when people notice like 11, 11 on the clock, right, just as like the most basic, simple idea is like when they're like, oh, hey, look, it's 11, 11. Whoa. That kind of like same um, excitement of like paying attention and that like almost like somebody highlighting that is like I could be watching a show. I could be listening to a podcast. I could be listening to a TikTok. Um, I could be listening to a book. I could be out and about. There could be a commercial. Is that all of a sudden that word pops up later. And it's like playing go fish inside of a filter. And when two yeah. things that match up, I'm like, okay, what? What? And like, I don't know. I don't really actively think about things. I just kind of like, I don't know. My brain does it on its own and it just happens. And I'm like, oh, whoa. And that's, yeah. And I, and I'm, and I've been trying to make bank on that lately because I realized that like I get these epiphanies and it's like, I'm not really even present for them. I have to catch up on them. And that's where like, I've been trying really hard to notice when they like kind of take over and when I'm actively thinking about them. And so, yeah, it's a, uh, it's one of those things though with synchronicities, I definitely take them as a sign. Um, i been having like a lot of mirrored numbers um this week i've probably had the least amount of mirrored numbers but it was getting to the point where i'm like okay what what do you wow. want wow please come on i've seen 13 13 12 12 14 14 15 15 17 17 Whoa. and i'm like this is only one day seriously what do you want wow. who are you what do you want please <laughs> tell me and then somebody, and then all of a sudden I get like this message from like just s sitting in on someone's like uh, TikTok live or something or whatever. And all of a sudden it shows up again or there's something that wow. like triggers the feeling. And I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, okay. It's And the person's like, if you are getting this message right now, it's telling you to stop. Shut up. There's nobody outside of you. This is you talking to you. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay, what do I want? What am I doing here? Why am I trying to let myself like so kind of almost like, hey, hey, hello. And then the odd time I'm like, what? Oh, oh, okay. What? Hey, huh? Well, I don't remember. Oh, okay. Never mind. And then that, hey, 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 hey. And so when I when I finally clue in on those points where I'm like, hey, what? And just so happens I catch it at the same time that they're like actually still explaining it almost feeling is that that's when I acknowledge and recognize the the patterns and the synchronicities. And um, like I've always allowed myself to be guided by whatever it was that just if I had this like gut feeling but it's not really I don't know I've always had an acknowledgement of feelings feelings in themselves are a confusing factor for me but yet I feel them but they don't feel in assortment the way that they're supposed to kind of thing and so I'm very able to acknowledge them like the way you would acknowledge what the blue house with the yellow sunflowers out front of it in that book you read last year 
now when trying to explain it to someone else, you have that residual in your back of your head, like someone making a stamp, dipping it in the ink, and not the first print, but the second one without dipping it again is what like I have always as like this vision slash just knowing feeling inside. And so, yeah, and then I just, I accept that, like, I only answer people on Reddit, for example, that I feel guided to. I only go and post on their messages if I have almost like somebody pulling the leash, like a dog kind of thing going, here, 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 here. And I'm like, okay. And because, like, I was an automatic raider always growing up that um, I could sit down and write poetry off the top of my head, like, with great skill uh with no no prompt no nothing is that I learned that I had this gift of like automatic writing and when I realized that I have like automatic um speaking was that I'm like man I am an incredible rapper under my breath but the moment I like say it out loud it doesn't work but I would also speak in like almost Shakespearean style and it would be poetic and it would be a resemblance of what is currently happening in or around me or whatever my thoughts were. Do you feel that you're, um, cause you were, you were, you mentioned in one of your videos that you're clairvoyant and you've been able to kind of, you know, tune into these, tune into these aspects. Do you, when you tune in, um, do you feel that there's a specific kind of frequency that you're, that you're feeling your, your body, like, is there a similarity that you're finding yourself kind of tuning into whether it's hearing from, you know, the afterlife or whether it's going, you know, you know, like, Oh, I can tell you everything about yourself right now. Is there, can you sense those little distinctions? Yeah. The biggest difference is, uh, the biggest difference comes down to whether or not it's me like forefront of thought talking or whether it's a just automatic response like if I'm thinking about it there's pausing there's this almost like relay response that is delayed and because I'm thinking about the things due to the fact that like I'm catching up it's almost like I'm hearing it, like I'm hearing it literally for the first time as you're hearing it. These are not pre-thought of thoughts. So I'm just as like taken in by the thought as the other person. And so it's this common feeling of like, a, almost like, almost like in a conversation, you know, how natural pauses and everything happened is like that natural pause of like, okay, all right. Yeah. I'm listening. Go ahead. Talk kind of thing. Or is it my, and then when I'm like, Oh, I have an idea on that is when I interrupt whatever's coming like through and I'm like, but I don't know what I lost where I was kind of thing. <laughs> and I'll literally for like, I don't have any idea. And it was when I was doing a YouTube show um, with we psychics when I was doing this psychic show with them uh, that she had talked about how because the messages goes like it just comes through channeled through her is that when she would have clients message her later asking her about these things is like you have to give her a reminder and things like that because this is just um this is not her thoughts. These aren't her thoughts. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so true. I never have any idea what I've said. <laughs> and I always feel so bad. And I'm that person that remembers everything. And so the idea that I have no idea what I talked to you about, I'm like, uh, what? Wow. What? So you kind of step yeah. out of the way and you, you just let it, it's speaking through you. Absolutely. Whatever that spirit is. That's so interesting. So you kind of go, all right, I'm going to wait off off stage for my turn to come back on. In the meantime, mm -hmm. you're going to take over the role for me right now. And uh, wow, that's so interesting. 
so when you were in the midst of this is interesting because this this was another question I was going to ask you was when you're in the midst of other people who are and this is awesome to hear that you that you were like on a live psychic show. What was the name of that, by the way? Um, it was We Psychics. I They had been uh, really awesome. They actually wanted to give me the YouTube channel because I guess they didn't work out. And so they wanted to give me our YouTube channel. And I don't know, timing just didn't end up lining up and things like that. And I don't know. Well, Hopefully it will still come ask, through. Because I was going to ask you if you find your powers, you know, like like uh, tuning in even more, even more sensitively um when you know and amplified even when you are in the presence of other clairvoyants and other people who are you know in that same vibe i can only imagine that that's like a superpower right there that they're with having three or more of you or two or more of you in the same location that this would be like you know there'd be a wider a wider amplification oh absolutely like when my friend cat and i when we do like a tiktok live is like it's almost like somebody puts on that um satellite phone kind of uh mm -hmm. dish because right. it's no longer just working on like day-to-day -day cell phone thing this is overpowering all of that and it's like oh my goodness and it's 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 honestly the most limiting thing i find is the fact that People have a sense of associating physical touch items to being the tangibility of the process. So I find like me, I just, I just plug into people. And so cards for me can be quite distracting. And I feel like I have to try and find a way to incorporate what it is that I am getting internally that wants to take over that won't feel heard or understood without the tangible asset of having the physical cards. Wow. Wow. Have you ever thought about making your own, your own uh, deck? N no, actually, I just want you to make a deck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know I was what? telling my friend Kat about that. I'm like, I really want, so there's this guy in this Rado Projecto, like legit, if you get to check out his, uh, his art book, it's one of those coffee table art books. And I'm like, but legit this like, dude, I swear. Cause she's like my alien friend, right? Like where we all like alien nerd out. I and love everything. it. And she's like, really? I'm like, yeah, it totally needs to be one because it just so happens the person who did the artwork for tool, um, their 10,000, uh, days, days. Yeah. 10,000 days. Yeah, it looks great, um, right. Right. They have a deck of art cards and it's oh so funny because people, m people comment in the Amazon like reviews there isn't enough things in here because of it being an Oracle or tarot. It's like they're not Oracle or tarot. They're just art cards. But that's the incredible beauty of it is like that is the whole purpose of being a card reader is the interpretation of the message that comes through. Oh, on the my cards. gosh. I love it. You are totally inspiring me because I've been thinking about it. ever since you planted that seed in my brain in that comment section. I was like, you know what? I've got to figure out how to get how to make these things um, cards because it just would be so great to be able to have them just so small, so compact. There they are. And. Oh man, you you've totally inspired me. I'm going to seriously. I will send you like a link of some stuff because I know that uh, some people had been uh, doing the whole like card interest thing, and so I know that there is like print on demand places that will print you cards and things like that, like playing cards or art cards, and wow. so like. Yeah. And so that would, that would be something that you could easily, because the biggest thing is like most people who want to do a project like this, they're like, so I guess I should start drawing, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's that thought of like, okay, what am I going to do for this? But to take what you have as this crazy, amazing inspiration, like I kid you not, my friend Kat, when she reads the card, she literally, like, we will sit there and analyze a card like a picture of a card and we will send it back and forth over messenger to each other with circling things pointing out things outlining things 
everything like that. We will point at the faces, like legitimately to the point where like this past summer, I have an image of some clouds that literally look like someone put a black and white image through and it caught half of someone's face. Whoa, that's awesome. Right. But like I see that, but she didn't see it at first. But so she circled what she saw. And then when I showed her exactly and I like minimized everything else around it so that it didn't just look like it being clouds, because, you know, once you make that preconceived judgment, that's where like things get iffy. Yeah. Right. Then your subconscious mind needs to be convinced otherwise. Right. And so when I put it all out there and it looks like it's one of those like you know the images that didn't quite properly develop yeah almost like an overexposure of a black and white polaroid but where the black and white was still grainy enough to create half of a face wow 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 it was like a giant was peeking through the cloud at you right it's like uh, you know it just caught part of its face it was insane it legitimately Looking at a photo from like 1920s, 1930s, like somebody's photo that they had before they went to war kind of thing. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. You know, and that's what's so fun is like every single one of these things is the interpretation that's left up to whoever's viewing it. It's their own belief systems. It's their own. You know, that's what's so interesting with this stuff like. I go back and forth like when I think about voodoo or I think about witchcraft, I think about things like that where, you know, I understand there's a whole ceremony that's involved with this particular thing or a whole, you know, all these symbolic representations of these specific things. And then yet I, what, what, what it comes down to in my brain is the fact that all it is, those ceremonies and all those specific ingredients, what keeps popping in my brain is that in order for that to be a real spell that these people feel that they are casting, let's say, for instance, in order for them to really feel like it's really working, this is necessary. These are the things that are necessary in order for them to get more focused into it, more uh, vi- visualizing it more, uh, putting more heart and soul perhaps into it. And basically, they're just permission slips that kind of enable these people to kind of allow for that, that possibility to happen. Um, yet you always hear that the voodoo or whatever doesn't work unless one believes in it. So, so there could be a voodoo doll of someone out there getting stabbed, yet it's not working because the other person has no idea that it's going on. Or maybe if they had that planted that seed in their brain where someone's like, I have a voodoo doll of you and it's working, you know, and then you start feeling the neck pains. I don't know, but it just seems to me that something will, kind of like they say that like Reiki, Reiki works if you're receptive to it, if you're open to it. So What are your thoughts about that? Well, for me, it's like for a basic like logic science point of if you have something that runs at 2.4 gigahertz, it is not going to connect to the 5 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you're not attuned to it, if you're not open to it, if you haven't clicked off that like radio, um, like, you know, that on a, on a list where you're making that check mark, that radio box where you're like, yes, I want this included, please. Is like, unless you unlock that 5G, that thing is just not going to be picking up that 5G like signal. So mm-hmm. it can be sending mm-hmm. it all day long, but you're not getting it. You're not going to get the speeds. You're not going to get the bandwidth. You're not going to get any of it. That's a so, phenomenal yeah. analogy right there. That is a phenomenal analogy. The difference between, let's say, a 3D um, um, mindset, you know, and then the 5D or 5G, as you're saying, you know, the 5G mindset where it's like going, okay, you know, there's so much more power out here to be able to be accessed. There's so much more accessibility of all these different, you know, all these different connections once you plug into it, huh? Absolutely. And that's the thing is like people know for a fact, like if like, so if you get a new modem kind of thing and you set it up and you're given the choice to have it like you can have it where it just gives you the one signal and a lot of technology out there gives the smart like switch almost where it will like um, meter the bandwidth to send the signal of a 2.4 or to a five, depending on what it's like reception rate is, but it's based on what is like that caliber of reception. Right. And people know this. So they're like, Oh, 5g, that makes things better. Hey, 
I want it. I want to have better speeds. That means I get better frames per second. Well, that's the thing is like people don't realize like that's the same subscription and that same aspect is that. Yeah, exactly. That 3D to 5D. But like you are not going to be able to even like no matter how much 5G your <laughs> hardware out there can emit if your yeah. phone that you're on to pick it up aka your body if yeah. your body has not been upgraded your mindset has not been yes. upgraded <laughs> then it doesn't matter because at the end of the day is like your heart is the true hardwired chip inside of your your unit so if your heart doesn't truly believe then guess what you have not upgraded your chip mm -hmm. so that chip that cannot even remotely it can feel it as it goes past and you're like, oh man, I can see that that person has really good speed. Look at that download. And then <laughs> if, unless you believe that you can actually acquire those speeds, you're not going to be able to receive them. So unless you check off yeah. that, that mark in your, in your like internal code, because we are built for that infinite, right? We're like that most amazing thing that has been built for that infinite adaptation you know it's why like five degrees in the summer versus five degrees in the winter is going to feel like a crazy difference right mm -hmm. and like we will freeze in the same weather that we will put t-shirts on and be like i'm dying to heat that's just depends right. on which one you're used to right that's right that's right that's and so, so that's where like it's it's that thing that is that people if they realize that like I, I think it's actually a lot more people realize it's that people don't we've taught humanity to stop feeling and we've created this bubble where we have almost created a unless it's dramatic traumatic and explosive it doesn't count and yeah. There's it, a lot of that sort of like that's, you know, hey, look over here. This dynamic thing is going on, yet it's the quietest people. It's the monks that are sitting on mountains who are making the most change by serving right? as these examples of a microcosm of, of what's possible out there in the world. And that's what's interesting. It's like, you know, I've, I've, I've heard time and time again this whole idea of like hustle. You got to hustle. You got to hustle. Well, OK, according to whose rules, do I want to play those rules? No. Does that sound preferable to me? No. Does that sound exciting? No. So I'm not going to adapt to whatever that hustle mentality is, which usually reflects, you know, this idea. Every time I hear of hustle, I imagine like the big mountain and all of the adversity coming your way, all the rocks that are fly, you know, flying down the mountain at you, all the barbarians are trying to, you know, st st uh, steal from you or the, the bears trying to eat you. You know, you always just think of like, that's part of the hustle. Like, oh, you know, you get it. It's drudgery. Well, no, it doesn't have to be forcing at all. It can be one of those things where you're skiing down a mountain where the momentum is taking you along at such a rapid pace where you plug into this idea of, oh, my gosh, there's so much more to me than then I realize the fact that I am all that is the fact that I am infinite just to, you know, to, to call back what you were saying. Um, so I am this infinite thing. How can I make it work in my favor? How can I make my guides more um, um, viewable to me and recognizable? And um, how can I incorporate the universe into this journey? And how can we do this together and make it fun and playful all, all at the same time? <laughs> and it's really quite interesting when you find, when you find yourself in that mode of, you know, to get back to synchronicities, that's when I really feel things are really, you know, I'm really in my groove when, when there's a whole bunch of, you know, just one synchronicity is exciting, but then you got boom, 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 boom. And then it just keeps going like the Fibonacci sequence. And you got all these that just keep compiling. And, um, Oh, I just love that. I love that, that vibe of being in the groove. Do you feel that when you're in that, you, you're able to, you know, either automatic write better or channel better or, you know. I think it's that I think it's giving that tangible feeling it, you know, like that. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. You know, where you're like, yeah. I felt good after I did this. But the fact that I just finished this and this is the first thing I see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You done did good. You know, like. <laughs> Like you feel that like, yes, this is exactly what I was subscribing to. Yes. 
Oh, so, yeah. It feels so good. And I think it's so great when we look at those victories when they happen and we can chart it back to that, that original intention. We can look back through that. We follow that little umbil- umbilical cord and go, okay, where does that, where does that begin? When was that first excitement that I had thinking about this specific moment ever possibly happening? And now it's happening now. And it's all thanks to that moment way back then that I thought about that. Or, you know, it's also simultaneously, I like to think, is that when these when these moments are happening for us in this moment in time and something is exciting happening now, in a sense, as we look, think back to our former selves, what we're doing is we're kind of effectively kind of planting a seed in our past selves brain of going, yep, it, it's happening. Just to let you know, just to let you know, keep following that intuition. Oh, my God. That is so crazy that you say that. Oh my goodness. I think it was last night actually that I felt like I literally was re- like I was laying there. You know when you're not like asleep but you're not awake but you're almost like actively in that halfway yeah. point. Yeah. I was like returning back to these moments of when my daughter was really little and almost like letting myself know at that time that you remember those times when you thought about, I wonder like, why can't I see what she'll be like when she's grown up? You know, do people really think about these things? And then going and almost feeling like a, I got to return back to that self point wow. and, and be like, hey, guess yeah. what? You made it. <laughs> yeah. Didn't matter that you thought about it. Can you believe this? you like that that inscription that you put there is now here and i just wanted to return and say hey we did it i love it what a great gift for your past self what a great gift that you did that for yourself it felt like quantum was like right there like and it's funny because what you had just said that triggered that thought process now was like oh my gosh yes because that is like and you use those cue key words and that's where like for me is like I have this almost like set of alert things that every time it's programmed with new cue and clue words it's like beep 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 oh oh I feel the same way and you know what's so interesting is that this this revelation that has been coming to me big time lately is that like it's so funny how you have those revelations and you go okay this has been sitting under my nose and like and like foreshadowing to me for the past you know x amount of years in this way and then you finally go Oh my gosh, this is what it's been trying to tell me the whole time. And it's totally a business. It's been sitting on my nose the whole time. Well, I finally had that revelation the other night. I, I met this 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 uh, guy and his lady friend at this bar that I was at. And I was having such a strong connection in this guy, conversation with them. And I'm like, okay, you two are so familiar to me to the point that I know we hung out in past lives together. And you two, I have got to stay in contact with because I know we're going to my, – my future – I'm getting this vibe right now from my future self going – you better you have got to connect right now because the three of you are doing phenomenal things in the future, whether it's music, whether it's, you know, skits. I don't know what it is, but you you three are doing something phenomenal right now. Stay in contact with them because it was at that moment where I go, OK, that revelation had popped in my brain. And this is this is this is what I was referring to here is at that moment, I realized, OK, the way that I re- the way that I recognize those who I have had soul contracts with, the way that the universe has been, you know, tugging at me going, Hey, Hey, here's another one. This whole time is when that moment happens between people. When I feel that they are speaking, just like what you're saying, those codes, those code words, those cues, and they're going, boop, 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 and you're going, hold on a second. Here is that inborn here. Here's that little implanted thing that my, that my, that my, my, uh, body list, infinite list self has, has made an agreement with these people. And we said, Hey, guess what? We will notice each other again in person when we feel that familiarity. That will be the way. That will be our little Easter egg to ourselves. That will be the little breadcrumb that connects it, it connects us <laughs> to ourselves when we meet up again in those limited earthling bodies that camouflage. And we see each other and we feel that familiarity. That's the little key word that, that we're leaving for ourselves. Okay? You guys got it? Then we go, okay, break. You know, give each other a hand, uh, a high five. and go, okay, break. You know, and then we dive into the human experience. And I'm realizing more and more as I'm feeling this, as I'm feeling with you, as I'm feeling with uh, Lisa Bowman, who I interviewed for the podcast, as I feel with these various people, Rob Fronebarger, um, each of these various people, 
Um, and I'm all, inviting them all to be on the podcast because I want to share that familiarity with them again and also share that with, you know, the populace at large To because to, I'm sure that what is power packed in our interview here, there are going to be people going, uh-huh, I, uh, uh-huh, I recognize that, I recognize that, I recognize that. You know, she she is a, a, an aspect of me. She's a reflection of me. And they're going to feel those familiarities with you, with our conversation today. And they're going to feel this with us and go, ah, mm-hmm, I recognize that. I bet you these are people that I made a soul contract with before I dove into the earthling body. So each of these people I've been meeting, it's like one of those big alarms going, woo, woo, woo. Okay, guess what? You met another one. You met another one. And it just feels so good. It's so interesting that when you when you started saying that was that I just had this instant like I like I guess this instant like image come up into my head that like almost as if because I was like you're describing like a movie totally like that's exactly what we do in movies right we're like okay in order for us to beat this level we have got to find a way for us to encode it so that we will yeah. recognize and so now we are like these bodies that are like these like resonance meters that are like boop boop yes boop. but we all have our specific like there's an ingrained like special like almost like how there's a serial number on cars mm-hmm. VIN number that no matter what you do, it's still, it's that's the ingrained code or like the Mac ID of something is that like there's that ingrained code that it will recognize. Oh it's my gosh. So almost like there's like this <laughs> and only at this yeah. high, like stupidly high frequency is that anything else that goes and because we can recognize harmony, right? We yeah, always yeah. know when something is out of tune. We always know. Yeah. Right? It's a natural given thing. It doesn't matter. It, sure, people can sing out of tune all they want. But when listening to oncoming sounds, we can tell when something is, like, obtrusive. We can tell if it is, like, out of sync, out of harmony, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and everything like that. And so, like, when you said what you said, I instantly saw, like, this almost like there is this uh, frequency wavelength that because just like if you had tuning forks is that when you set the tuning forks or like the sound bowl is that what is like going outwards and everything that like in, um, oh my gosh, the emotion code, um, they talk about this perfectly about how when that goes off in that sound that everything that is within that sound like capacity will be like it will resonate at yes. that capacity yes. and so like that's where it's like our beacons just like having your wi-fi open on your phone that searches for the like a, an available wi-fi connection at any given time is that our internal like soul has the same encodings that it's like got that slight fraction of a fraction of a millifraction <laughs> of a coding uh, within that frequency that it picks up that bleep just like the the monitor on a submarine thing that goes boop. Oh boop. my gosh! Absolutely, absolutely, and that was the little Easter egg that we left for ourselves to be able to recognize that and go, "Yep, they're speaking your language. You're you're tuned in on that same frequency. You you are." Um, because you know it's so funny because like all throughout my life I've I've uh, I've wanted harmony with whoever I'm having interactions with I've wanted agreements I've and I you know I couldn't uh, explain this back then of course it wasn't until I started having more awakenings and more epiphanies and putting you know connecting things together that I was able to actually kind of say it so eloquently if you want to call it that but there are these times where I didn't realize it, but it was the win-win agreement that, you know, the win-win situations, the agreements, the, the cooperations, the, you know, how do we, how do we work together here? How does that happen? So the harmony was always what I was after. And I'm realizing now after while talking to you, the harmony that I was, that I was really looking for was the other orchestral, um, you know, what is harmony after all? You got the, the bass going, uh, and then an octave higher, you got the violin going, uh, and then an octave higher, you got the, you know, maybe the um, the harmonica going, uh, you know, and it's all on that same harmony. And you're feeling, okay, this is good. This is jiving. So it's great because it makes so much sense because they say m- music is the language of the universe. And how cool is that to think that our, that our, our spiritual selves 
made that yet another fun little Easter egg for us to be able to unravel and go, yep, you're, you're on the same wave. You're resonating together. You know, you're, you're amplifying, you're, you're, you're moving forward in, in terms of uh, collaboration with the universe. I mean, it's just, it's just beautiful. It's just, it feels so good. It's incredible because as you're saying this, I'm like, yeah, like whales, man, like their sonar and how they know who is their pack and things like that, that they are swimming with and how they talk is through that sonar. And here we are is that like, if music is like the language of the soul and of like everything, because yeah, everything comes down to a vibrational force, right? Just like the sonar and the like ultrasound is the fact that everything just through vibration and with sound comes the vibration and only through harmony comes solidity. And without the solid formation of such solidity, there is no harmony. Without harmony, there is no solidity, which means there's nothing tangible. You know, it's interesting because this is one of those things that like when you, um, you know, with it, it with, with you, you see, like with good friends or family or something, you can tell how in rapport someone is, how in harmony they are with each other. You don't even have to hear a word of what's going on. You just glance over there and you see they're using the same body language. They're mirroring each other. They're they're using the same like facial expressions. They're using the same hand movements. They're using, you know, maybe the same words, you know, the same voice inflection. So that means they're in, in harmony with each other. They're in tune on that same thing. And what's interesting is. This is why it's so important with like business partnerships, collaborations, definitely relationships, someone who you're in the company of all the time, someone that you're always in the, you know, music of you're in the orchestra of it's like, okay, so if this person is always playing these discordant, uh, you know, it's always off and there's no harmony and nor, nor do they care to harmonize. Then you're like, oh, my gosh, this person is, are they actually intentionally trying to mess up this orchestra here that we're trying Whoa. to sing a song together here? Is this person honestly trying to go, eh, 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 you know, or are they trying to jive in there? Are they trying to get into that groove? You know, And yet there's nothing wrong with their song. It's just not meant for this orchestra. That is insane. Right. Whoa. And so it's interesting because a lot of times, we're not, um, you know, very few times are those kinds of things, uh, the importance of those things, like, um, you know, we always hear that term, you are what you eat. And this is something that's gone through my brain all the time was, well, yeah, that's the conversations we're having. That's the food we're eating. Of course, that's the books we're reading. That's the magazines, whatever, any information you're putting in your brain is what you're eating, which is why I have not watched the news. And I cannot tell you, uh, it, probably decades at this point, um, because, that I want to know what thoughts are my own thoughts, what vibrations are my own vibrations, what, you know, uh, what is an instinct and what is done out of remembrance of something I just heard in, in the immediate, you know, like, oh, here's some fruit off the tree branch. What what is something that's just there already that I'm I'm kind of going, oh, OK, this is the thing to do. And what is truly ooh, what what is leading from intention? What's leading from my heart? And I think if we talked more about for, for people to understand, like the importance of the, of, you know, let's say a, a business a corporation or something. Well, it's always important to compliment people. It's always important to go, okay, what is this person's idea and how can we elevate it? Imagine if everybody within some partnership was, oh, I love your ideas. What can we all do to elevate that? And simultaneously, what can each one of us do to elevate each and every single of the other person's ideas? And on top of that, how do we blend it all together? Because it totally is possible. It's just a give and take. It's just, uh, you know, everybody gets a turn on the ride. And if there's that agreement that's being made, oh, the orchestra, it's a beautiful jazz, baby. It's a beautiful jazz. You know, you can improvise within it, but you know you're in the same melody. You know, you know, and then you can stretch out more like you hear in those great jazzes. They're like, boop, beep, boop, doo, boop, beep, boop, boop, beep, boop. You know, and they're going out there because why? They feel safe enough to because the other the other people in there are going boom, 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 boom. You know, they got they got that thing that's that's a consistency. But it's so much fun when you feel when you're truly in harmony, huh? Absolutely. Because you get to enjoy the music, right? Oh, 
Uh-huh. Prior to that, it's just noise. Once it's music, you're like, heck yes, this is my jam. <laughs> this is my jam. Yeah, yeah. I picture Napoleon Dynamite doing his dance. Oh, you yeah, know? totally. Oh, yeah. Like just rocking out hard to it. And it doesn't matter because that song is their jam. So that is yeah. the perfect dance for oh, their yeah. single only jam of them. And 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 unapologetically, too. I think it's so great when we see people who are so unapologetically just them and the art that's happening there. And they could care less than anybody was watching. There's no showboating. There's no, hey, look how cool I am. There's no ego. It's just a pure, it's just like watching a, a little, a little, let's say a little puppy and a little kitten just like enjoying each other's company. And you're going, oh my gosh, that is awesome. That, that's purity right there. They're not playing to the camera, you know, <laughs> they're just doing what they're doing. And I love seeing when people are just so in their zone um, that's, that's the most inspirational thing, really. That's, you're like, holy cow, this person is in their own reality and I can either, you know, lean in and be a part of it or, you know, there's something else going on over here, I suppose, but it's so great when you can all be in that groove. I had this image in my brain a while back and I realized, wow, it's, it's expanded even further. At first I had this feeling of like, wow, sometimes we're the needle on the record and sometimes we're the, sometimes we're the. The groove on the record sometimes with a needle in that groove, you know, and then I realized, wait a second, but then also we're the music that's coming out of it. And then also we're the, the gramophone that it's coming out of that speaker. And then also we're the ear that's here. Oh, and then also we're the music notes. And so also we're the ear that's interpreting it. Then also we're the, <laughs> you know, mouth that's singing it. So it's crazy. It just keeps going and going, huh? Here's your fun fact. Cats don't meow at other cats. They reserve this sound for getting attention, not to mention food, from humans. Stay tuned to Inspirato Projecto for more fun facts. It's the circle of life. I mean, Lion King wasn't lying. It's the circle of life. Oh, my gosh. You know, it's like one of my favorite things I I chose to. I've been really guided that, like, when I watch something lately, um, I watch it knowing that there's something that I'm supposed to learn within this. And so shadow and bone on Netflix. Um, and I, and I had to pull myself to watch it like quite a few times. Like I was not, I'm not huge on TV and things like that, but I I do as I'm like pointed. Right. Mm -hmm. And something that I love is that they pointed out that it's not magic. It's not about conjuring something out of nothing. Because it's, they call it small science because matter is never destroyed or created. It is ma- taking from the matter that it is and manipulating it into what you intend it to be. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? And just, <laughs> and so of once you heard that, segment too. Did- did you start finding it like once you started applying that knowledge, like what were some of the extraordinary, you know, epiphanies that were coming to you at that time? Honestly, I couldn't tell you. I I honestly like I write things down like seriously. I think even in one of my videos on TikTok, you can see that I've written all over the freezer in my garage because when I'm sitting there and I'm having a moment by myself, I'm like, I'm going to write. And I write things. Or I re- and that's where I've started recording things into the Anchor now, like Anchor app. Awesome. Uh, because I don't know what half of these things are. And because a lot of my day is, like, spent now, like, on my own and working towards myself and my goals is that I'm just kind of like – absorbing and acknowledging everything that's coming in and going with the flow in which it guides me. Now, as you notice that, do you feel that there are more, um, how should I say? Well, cause it sounds to me like a process like that would be, would, would included in that would be patience, would be appreciation of the process would be, um, maintaining a, a pleasurable state without that desire or that need or expectation of something like, okay, come on, hurry up already. Well, that was probably my biggest thing that I've had 
as an epiphany recently was that realizing that the destination that you choose, be it a vacation or a promotion, is it simply just a, another step on a, another journey? It's just a milestone on some other journey because you don't just stop. Right. You don't just be like, oh, here I am. <laughs> I made the big turns. <laughs> I right. delete everything. <laughs> I did it. I no. Did. Like, what did you want out of it? Like, you wanted to be super famous. And now you're like, yeah, I got one million subscribers. <gasps> I'm done, guys. Peace. Peace. Like, that, that doesn't happen. Like, Peace. There's I'm retiring. Hard. Yeah. yeah, like I one day, one million followers. There's just like that one day you finally made that mark, and you're like, <laughs> okay, I did it, guys. Delete, no story, no goodbyes, no nothing, just right. delete. Right. And it's like, okay, well, no, that's not it. Right. You this because that is going to represent something of another part of your journey. So there is no destination other than the destination is simply another marker of a milestone of how far you have come. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, how it impacts then, your new terrain. Yeah, because that's then the trampoline out of the next onto the next thing. That's like Exactly. But like that's the thing is like we all think that we're like on this process to this destination. You know, it's like I had thought about it <laughs> right. of like when you go for a vacation and you have like this perfect actual destination, like you're getting on a plane and you're going to this destination, you like you're not going there just to arrive there, right? Like right, there's right, reason right, why right. you're there, obviously. Oh <laughs> like obviously, you know. Like so, what did you want to do there? Why did you want to do it in that place? Why was that place so special? Because legitimately, if it was just to stand at the airport, you could do that literally anywhere yeah but, you had a great yeah. tiktok about that you know it's like what does that actually represent like when you hear people say oh i can't i i'm retired now okay now what you know like oh what does that mean to you sir you know or madam like okay you're retired now what did that mean to you does that mean that you get to walk along the beach near your house more now and that's something that, that just brings you satisfaction but because then if you look at that now the root of it really truly is the satis satisfaction that comes from what well, one thing might be not having to be bossed around by somebody else. Two, another thing of not having the pressure or the stress that, that comes along with whatever that work was. Uh, three, uh, not having to feel like you're in the rat race of like, ah, oh, the competition. Oh, my gosh. You know, so maybe it's like now going, wow, I get to do it my way now. I get to do that, you know, uh, that beach album I've always wanted to do. And now I get to do, you know, hang out with the dog and join those Frisbee competitions I always wanted to do, but I couldn't when I was at work. You know, what's that thing that I, it, it was a great TikTok that you, you came up with. And I'm, I think those are such important, um, such important epiphanies because, you know, it's so interesting. So many people love the, the Nikolai Teslas, the Albert Einsteins, the, all these wonderful philosophers that we hear about, all these wonderful um, um, people with these quotes that are quoted over and over and over again, yet it's tricky for them to recognize those same zeitgeists and same spirits when those spirits are standing in front of them. You ever notice that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because the fact is, is that like we can adore something now long after someone's dead, but God forbid today's day and age, do we, hold people to the same standard of epiphany and deemed qualification due to such epiphany is that like today's day and age, there is many philosophical people that if we were to pluck them all out of this time and throw them back in time, we would have endless books of knowledge that yes. we would revere as incredibly moving pathways in which the world shall turn. Yes. And yet today's day and age is, well, do you have a certificate for that, sir? Have you been indebted for this? <laughs> How much yeah. do you owe the government for you right. to actually be qualified to say right. that you know what the hell you're talking about? That's so true. No. Like, yeah, where's your award? Where's your plaque? Where are your credentials? Oh, you don't have that? Too freaking <laughs> bad. Well, guess what? Out of time. 
there was nobody who knew what right. the heck gravity was. Right. And somebody still told you what that was. And now the whole world lives by the same dang theory. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? It's like Aristotle and the gang. They all hung out in these bed sheets. You know, they're just wandering around, stumbling around in their grisly uh, faces and, 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 uh, and their and their bed sheets and their sandals, just just you know, kind of shuffling around, expounding this wisdom while they're hanging out under trees and and drinking wine by the lake. And they come up with these astounding ideas, these astounding revelations. Just like, let's be honest, the shaman and any of the channelers and any of the oracles, anyone who has dared absolutely to go and tune in to the all that is and go, you know, like okay, give me your wisdom, give it to me. Um, and and they were the ones who were daring enough to to go off into those directions and learn from, you know, because everyone else was too distracted with what? I don't know, uh, you know, fighting each other in, in, in stadiums or um, c- competing against each other in this arena or, you know, doing business dealings over there. But it's like, you guys, you should be really listening to what these dudes over here are coming up with. By If you, you know, if you really saw the value in this, you'd all just be sitting out under the tree with this, these people and listening to, to your epiphanies and sharing them with each other. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that. But the thing is, is like the funny part is, is we only know about these things now because they have been long proven, Right. Think about like the, the the person at the time though trying to convince people that this is a real thing, people. Like you were held yeah. to the ground because like it, it has nothing to do with the fact that your bones are are heavy. Like I swear it, it has nothing to do with that. Like you were there's more to it. Mm-hmm. Hear me out. Is no different than the oh god, here goes another crazy person on the internet making yes. a video, you know, like right. You no know now that like hey they were for reals i guess it's the fact that like we have no idea how much of the documentation that we do now can write tomorrow because like what we know now is what they accomplished but at one time they were a crazy person to someone yes fighting for someone to hear them that would not hear them wow Wow. And isn't that interesting? You know what? That just, I, I'm getting so many revelations while talking to you. This happens when I talk to high vibrating people. One of the revelations is the idea that despite the fact of like, let's say a Van Gogh or, you know, any of these, these artists that were just not po- popular back in their day. I mean, heck we've heard about how um, it's a wonderful life. Wasn't even, uh, get, you know, people are like, ah, I want to get that little movie out of the way, but it's like, Oh, you know, it's like the cream that rises to the top. This kind of goes along with that idea. Like the cream rises to the top, no matter how um, um, quiet of a splash, I guess, if you want to use that analogy of, a, of someone jumping off the diving board and, and the lack of attention that's given to it, no matter how quiet of a splash that an artist or a musician or someone out there has made, it's like, whoa, the value of that authenticity still shines through and it still shines through. And it's beautiful to know in this day and age, like especially now, like there are those Van Goghs and Picassos that are actually being hailed as legends in their own time. You know, that is cool that you can actually kind of be alive within the time of people um, seeing the value in in what's going on. That's why it's so funny because that's why like a lot of these cliches I've noticed are so very important and so very true because it's sometimes we don't have to we, sometimes those truths are not true for us until we live them and then we go you know what this reminds me of that you know cliche and you go oh my gosh that's what that cliche means oh wow i just lived through a cliche that is no wonder why it's a cliche <laughs> You're going, well that's that the thing sense. hardware wasn't upgraded yet like you hadn't had like your hardware hadn't had the ability to do that auto update yet it's so great. it's, it's great. like it's there like we downloaded the packet file but like you don't have <laughs> yeah. a button to open it so it's here when you finally download that program and then wow. you, can- and you never know when that's going to happen you know and this goes along with i think you mentioned video games earlier like that idea of you like with um, Legend of Zelda, I like to use the analogy of how a couple analogies there is great analogies. You know, it, it's it's a bit, just as a side note here, video games and all kinds of things are just extraordinary symbolic representations of what's going on behind the scenes and the way that the universe works, by the way. And one in one one of these magnificent ways I just got to point out is like how Legend of Zelda you, you did you ever play that game, by the way? Uh, yeah, I actually bought the I never did as a kid. 
But as an adult, I did. I got one of those, like, you know, like the retro SNES thing. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So, you know, (laughs) you got it. You know, you got your little sword and you're going over in the bushes. And also, Mm -hmm. what? Here's a little you're getting coins that are hiding in the bushes that you never would have found if you didn't start going. Yeah. If you didn't check there, like you would have never have gotten it. If you didn't hit the audio question box, you were not getting whatever. There was no radiating into it. Right. You had to, you know, you had to follow your heart. You had to follow your intuition and go, oh, what the heck? Maybe maybe there's something fun over here in this bush. And then guess what? Then you find a portal into another fairy pond where the, you know, this, the fairy mm-hmm. goes, now you've earned a, another part of the Triforce or something. And you're going, whoa, I, how was I ever to know that that would have been there? Unless one of my fellow gamers would have said, yeah, go over there. Or, um, you know, there's no other way to find that. So, but if you didn't believe you could actually get that good to get yes. there or do that, then you would have never even bothered. Right. And I love how the universe gives us those little gifts for going, oh, my gosh, you fo- you followed your heart. And here's that little here's that little breadcrumb, another little breadcrumb that you yourself have have left there. Your future self has left this here for you in this past version of yourself to find it. <laughs> And you knew that you would follow your heart, so you you gave yourself this reward because you did that. And it feels so good. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Hey, I actually have to go pick up my daughter in, like, a little bit. Um, Okay. So I'm going to have to wrap it up right now so that I can go and get her. I didn't realize how increased – I knew – I should have known that it was going to be, like, one of those things that was – it would have been hours worth of like just download. That's where I was like, I'm not, I have no questions. I have no points. I have nothing written down. I'm like, it's just going to go exactly the way it's intended to. But yeah, sorry about that. No, 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 no worries. But before you go, I want people to be able to reach you for whether you have an Etsy shop, whether you got the, you mentioned the YouTube channel, if you got a Twitch, anything out there that could lead people to your content. Well, I know fearlessly Phoenixing on, on, uh, TikTok for sure, which is how we met. But what are what are any of the ways that people can? Um, you? Actually, it's literally fearlessly phoenixing. Like I secured that name on like literally everything. So whether it's fearlessly phoenixing at gmail.com, fearlessly phoenixing on Instagram, fearlessly phoenixing on YouTube, uh, Telegram, you name it, the at symbol and fearlessly phoenixing will get you me. Uh, no matter where you go. And so um, within the next couple of weeks, um, my web page should be coming up. So uh, that will be good. Like um, a friend of mine, we are opening up everything on there and she's going to have her incredible designs and we're going to see what all can set off things because the ultimate goal is this like idea dream that I had. And it's a, it's, it's something that brings everybody together that is within this unified thought process of that same frequency to make it a place that it it's a harmonized beacon and so i'm on the works and getting that up and going so yeah we're starting off with the web page and um that chose to re i had gotten the last year i had got the domains fearlessly phoenixing.com and fearlessly phoenixing.ca uh and this year I was actually going to cancel them and I didn't do it in time. So it redid it. And I was like, okay, I get you. I get you. I'll just make the, I'll make the dang website. I'll try to get out of this. but Fine. I'll do it. Oh, with everything else. It's perfect. It's wonderful. So thank you so much for having me. I, I would love to actually like, I don't know, go down a rabbit hole on, I've had very many different crazy experiences that like yeah i also talk a lot so i apologize <laughs> no this is i'm a talker too this is, i actually try to stay away from the phone because i know i'll just keep talking uh, but that's hey, me too you, we are brainstorming with people and you got great ideas flowing through it's like okay i want to keep pursuing this i want to keep pursuing this where else is this going and i'm just i have such a mm, i just love ideas so much i'm i would say i'm addicted to ideas and um, so when I get to hear new ideas coming through people, especially if they're synchronistic with things that I was thinking about, I'm like, all right, let's keep exploring this. What's going on here? What's going on? And so um, thank you for exploring some of those today. Oh, thank you. I Oh, my gosh. this I've been so excited because I've been like thinking about how synchronistically I've been like, oh, my gosh, 
that's another word, writing down another word. That's another word. Oh my gosh. And then this and this, and I was writing all these things down and I was like, oh my God, is this person my twin? So I thought that was super cool. So yeah, I love it. And I do, I get on the same ways because I know that as soon as I get sucked in, I'm going to be like sucked in for the long haul. Yes. So <laughs> I yes. totally feel yes. you. Yes, yes, I know. It's like the Lamborghini gets on the Autobahn and I'm like, I don't want to take my foot off the pedal here. You know, exactly. Like I know that there's there there's a speed limit, but <laughs> I, I'm here, right? Like so, this is like one of those times that I'm just gonna paddle to the metal, you know? That's right. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, it was so good talking to you. Thank you so much for taking some time out, and then I'll just be spending some time throughout the today, uh, just you know, writing out. Um, if there's any, let's let's say if there's a biography or anything that you want me to include in the description of this episode or specific links. Um, you know, I'll, I'll include them in this episode that people be able to, you know, uh, awesome. uh, click on and take off, take off to one of your many portals. Wonderful. Thank you. That's awesome. Definitely. I will, uh, I will definitely get back to you after I go and pick up my daughter from school and, um, I should have it all figured out by then so that I can send that on your way. Awesome. All right. Well, you have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Awesome. Thank you so much. See you Bye. soon. This is Blythe Baines, and you're listening to Inspirato Projecto. It's a face palm, a face palm, a balm of calm, like an a palm bomb. It's a face palm, a face palm, crumbly malm of loamy alms. And how soon do you think you to, to do it again? It's a face palm, a face palm. Here we come, alms playing Brahms on prom. And how soon do you think you're to do it again? And the homes from Guam, Guam to the cable comes. Are the Grom Rom diatoms glom in their moms? It's a face palm, a face palm. The book of psalms and rhymes and rums. And how soon do you think you'll do it again?